And we are back with part three of this week's reading of the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, Tree of Life Version, TLV. And we are reading out of Exodus chapter 16 to 24. We just got done before I paused um, and we were reading chapter 19 um, where God actually wanted what he wanted to do when he brought the people to Mount Sinai is he wanted to reestablish a relationship with his people that he had with Adam and Eve. But as you see, the people are going to reject that. They, they get fearful of the, of the loud trumpeting sound, the, the quaking of, uh, you know, the quaking that they're feeling, the shaking, the, the smoke coming from the mountain. Um, and they actually reject it. And we're going to, we're going to get into that a little bit as well. But he also said a warning um, and he was speaking of the Kohanim that were with Moses. So these are the people that were the elders that were selected um, in the previous chapter. Um, they became the Kohanim, the priests. And then we have, of course, Joshua is also with him and Aaron. Um, but he was not allowing everybody to go up and especially not the people. They were not to come come up um, or he would would come down against against them is what he's saying. So that's a little bit about um, chapter 19. So, of course, and we know what the shofar sounds like. It's kind of like a trumpet sound. Um, but this was really like super duper loud. Um, so it, it, it kind of was frightening to them and they really didn't want any part of it as we will see as we read on. Chapter 20, it is entitled the 10 words, which we know in, in most Bibles it's called the 10 commandments. Then God spoke all of these words saying, I am Adonai your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. Do not make for yourself a graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven, above or on the earth, below or in the water, under the earth. Do not bow down to them. Do not let anyone make you serve them. For I, Adonai your God, am a jealous God, bringing the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me but showing loving kindness to the thousands of generations of those who love me and keep my mitzvot. In mitzvot, mit, bleh, tongue tied there. Mitzvot again means commandments. You must not take the name of Adonai your God in vain, for Adonai will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. Remember Yom Shabbat to keep it holy. You are to work six days and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Shabbat to Adonai your God. In it you shall, do, you shall not do any work, not you, nor your son, your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, your cattle, nor the outsider that is within your gates. For in six days Adonai made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Thus Adonai blessed Yom Shabbat and made it holy. And Yom Shabbat simply means the day of the Sabbath. Honor thy father and your mother so that your days may be long upon the land which Adonai your God is giving you. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness against your neighbor. Do not covet your neighbor's house, your neighbor's wife, his manservant, his maidservant, his ox, his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. All the people witnessed the thundering and the lightning and the sound of the shofar and the mountain smoking. When the people saw it, they trembled and stood far off. So they said to Moses, you speak to us and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us or we will die. So Moses said to the people, do not be afraid, for God has come to test you so that his fear may be in you, so that you do not sin. The people stood far off while Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. Then Adonai said to Moses, say this to Benaiah Israel, you, you, you yourselves have seen that I have spoken to you from heaven. 
Do not make gods of silver alongside me, and do not make gods of gold for yourself. You are to make an altar of earth for me, and there you will sacrifice your burnt offerings, your fellowship offerings, your sheep and your cattle. In every place where I cause my name to be mentioned, I will come to you and bless you. When you make for me an altar of stones, do not build it from cut stone, for if you use a tool on it, you will have profaned it. Nor are you to go up to my altar on steps so that your nakedness would not be uncovered while on it. And now it was in the manner that they, they dressed during those times as well. There's quite a bit here. Um, not only do we have the Ten Commandments, and the interesting one of the interesting commandments, and people don't even realize, you know, when they say false things against uh, against other people, they are bearing false witness against your neighbor. That is one of those covenants. So like when they're, you know, when um, like our, our politicians, for instance, and I don't like to get into politics, when they lie about one another, even in their campaigns, they're being, bearing false witness against one another. And that is, that is breaking one of the, one of these 10 commandments and coveting is desiring basically to have what someone else has. Um, so we're not to be doing that. So the other thing that I wanted to mention too in chapter 20, um, again, as I was mentioning, God wanted to establish a relationship with his people. Um, and he had that and it was a beautiful relationship that he had with Adam and Eve that he met with them in the cool of the evening and, and he talked with them and walked with them um, day after day after day until, of course, you know, they sinned. And that was all broken. So what he was trying to do was to reestablish a relationship with the people that he chose to be theirs. So, so they would have relationship, but they rejected it um, out of fear. They rejected it. They didn't want to hear from him. Um, actually, they were perfectly okay. If something happened to Moses, he'd send them, they'd send him up there to hear what God had to say. And, and they, they were, they were okay with, hearing from Moses. So this is how we got pastors and things like that. We've got priests and pastors and all that um, because the people are not establishing a relationship with God. And you know what? Everyone can hear from God. God is no respecter of persons. If you, you know, he will talk to everyone, um, all of his children. So we are all able to hear from him um, in our own way. So that's a really important chapter, not only because of the Ten Commandments, known here in this Bible as the 10 words, but because there's so much going on here um, within this chapter. Um, so I just wanted to share a little bit of that with you. There's one other thing. Um, when he was making, ins he was giving instructions about building an altar, if they were to use stones, they were not to use anything to cut that stone um, with a tool because it will profane it. It will, it will make it unclean. Uh, it had to be, you know, un, you know, unblemished stone, not with a tool that it was used. We're going to go into um, chapter twenty-one, Parashat Mishpatim is is in this um, in this section that we're going to be reading. Ordinances for the covenant. Now these are the ordinances which you will set before them. If you buy a Hebrew servant, he is to serve for six years. And in the seventh, he is to go free without payment. If he comes in by himself, he is to go out by himself. If he was married, then his wife will go out with him. If his master gave him a wife and she bears his, him sons or daughter, the wife and her children will be her masters and he will go free by himself. But if the servant plainly states, I love my master, my wife, and my children, and I will not go out free. Then his master is to bring him to God, then take him to a door or to a doorpost. His master is to pierce his ear through with an awl, and he will serve him forever. If a man sells his daughter to be a maid maidservant, she is not to go free as the male servants do. If she does not please her master who has selected her for himself, then he is to allow her to be redeemed. He will have no power to sell her to a foreign people, seeing as he has dealt deceitfully toward her. 
If he betrothes her to his son, he must give her the rights of a daughter. If he takes another wife, he is not to diminish her food, her clothing, or her marriage rights. If he does not provide these three to her, then she is to go free without payment. Whoever strikes the man so that he dies must surely be put to death. But if he did not hunt him down, yet God caused it to happen, then I will appoint for you a place where he may run. If a man presumes to kill his neighbor with craftiness, you are to take him from my altar and put him to death. Anyone who strikes his father or his mother must surely be put to death. Anyone who steals a person and sells him or is found with him under his hand must surely be put to death. Whoever curses his father or his mother must surely be put to death. If people quarrel and one strikes the other with a stone or with his fist, and the other does not die but lies in bed, if he rises again and walks around on his staff, then the, the one that struck him, he will be cleared. But he must pay for the loss of his time and help him to be thoroughly healed. If a man strikes his male or female servant with a staff, who dies by his hand, he must surely be punished. Notwithstanding, if the servant gets up in a day or two, he will not be punished, for he is his property. If men fight and hit a pregnant woman so that her child is born early, yet no harm follows, the one who hit her is to be strictly fined. According to what the woman's husband demands of him, he must pay as the judge, judges determine. But if any man, but if any harm follows, then you are to penalize life for life, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, hand for a hand, foot for a foot, burn for burn, worm, wound for wound, blow for blow. If a man strikes the eye of his male or female slave and destroys it, he must let him go free for the sake of the eyesight. If he strikes out his slave's tooth, he must let him go free for the sake of the tooth. If an ox gores a man or a woman, so that they die, the ox must surely be stoned, and its meat is not to be eaten, but the owner of the ox will be cleared. If the ox was given to, gore, to goring in times past, and a warning has been given to his owner, yet he has not kept it pent up, and it killed a man or woman, then the ox must be stoned, and its owner must also be put to death. If instead a ransom is placed on him, then he is to pay for the redemption of his life, whatever is demanded. Whether it has gored a son or daughter, this rule is to be applied to him. If the ox bores a male or female slave, he is to pay 30 shekels of silver to their master, and the ox is to be stoned. If one uncovers a pit or digs a pit and does not cover it and an ox or donkey falls in, the owner of the pit must pay compensation. He is to give money to the owner and the dead animal will be his. If one man's ox hurts another ox that it dies, they are to sell the live ox and divide the price. They are also to divide the dead one. Or if it becomes known that the ox was given to violence in times past and his owner has not kept it pent up, he must surely pay ox for ox, and the dead animal will be his own. If a man steals an ox or a sheep and kills it or sells it, he has to pay five oxen for one ox or four sheep for one sheep. So what is happening here, and actually in Exodus um, chapters 1 through 40, is, is the laws are being given. The laws being given, um, the laws were beyond, these are laws beyond the Ten Commandments. The first part deals with the law about servants. And the second part addresses the law about murder and strife. And it states, you know, if, if you smite a man that he dies, you shall surely be put to death. And, you know, the things that I had read to you. Um, and this is where that thing comes. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, the hand for a hand, a foot for a foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. So the other thing concerning the laws is laws concerning masters and servants, property rights, social life, um, and the Sabbath and feasts. These are important. God was establishing this with his people. So in these chapters, God is also going to be giving Moses, as we move forward, you're going to see the pattern for the tabernacle is given. And when he was in the mountain with him for 
40 days, um, the tabernacle was constructed a year after the exodus, actually. Um, there were three basic truths from the book of Exodus, and they are God blesses those who remain in covenant relationship with him. He is our God, and we become his holy people. And God very carefully explained in great detail what is and what is not acceptable to him. This is what's happening with, with the, the laws that he is actually telling them that he wants followed. And the third thing is God will deliver all who find themselves in bondage if we repent of our sins and call upon his holy name. Deliverance may, may not come right away, but it will come as long as we obey him and take him at his word. We all must learn how to wait on the Lord and move when he says move. God desires obedience from all of us. And I'm going to pause it now, and we're going to come back with chapter 22 of this week's reading.